At 2,228 metres, Mount Kosciuszko is the highest mountain on mainland Australia. Some 100,000 people make the trek to the summit of Mount Kosciuszko each year. Until 1974, it was possible to drive a car up there. Today, the only way to reach the top is to walk, or in winter, to ski. Most people walk from either Charlotte's Pass on the Summit Walk, or from Threadbow on the Kosciuszko Walk, which links up via a chairlift ride from Threadbow. The Kosciuszko Walk features an $800,000 elevated walkway made of steel mesh that lets sunlight reach the vegetation below. Mount Kosciuszko was named after the Polish explorer Sir Paul Edmund Strzelecki in 1840, in honour of the Polish national hero, General Tadeusz Kosciuszko. This year, between the 19th and the 21st of March, during the Kosy Fest, we celebrated the 170th anniversary of the discovery and naming of Mount Kosciuszko. The Kosy Fest is an annual, vibrant celebration of the Snowy Mountains. Australia's diverse multicultural society and the ideals of democracy and freedom. It unites many forms of art and performance, such as music, song, dance, poetry, painting and photography, in a series of colourful events lasting three days. The first festival was held in 2007. Named the Mound and Mount Kosciuszko Festival, it aimed to connect two important landmarks in Australia and Poland. Mount Kosciuszko in Australia's snowy mountains and the Kosciuszko Mound in Krakow, Poland. In 2008, the second festival brought together even more performers and community members from Jindabyne and Kuma. Photography, music and poetry contests were held in conjunction with the events. In 2009, the festival's name was changed to Cozy Fest. Again, it featured a wonderful range of artists and an international art competition. Festival organisers Ernestina Skuryat Kozek and Ula Lang had engaged in consultations with elders and family members of the Narugu people over a two-year period under the guidance of National Parks and Wildlife Service's Regional Manager for Snowy Mountains, Dave Darlington. As a result, the participation of Aboriginal dancers was made possible through the financial support of the National Parks and Wildlife Services, for which the organisers were very grateful. It was also Dave Darlington's experience and wisdom in encouraging Ernestina and Ula to liaise and negotiate directly with the Aboriginal group, which made the resultant cultural exchange a far more meaningful and personal experience. My name's Joseph Brown McLeod. I come from country here as well as East Coast, South East Coast. So the reason why we participate in this festival is to acknowledge our ancestors who come from country here um, before colonisation where Yatmatang, Jamatang, all this area is all this east, all this Alpine Alps area, it's all all country for us. Yeah. And Joseph, tell, could you tell us, or me personally, how important for you is, you know, the snowy mountain itself and, and mountain Kosciuszko, for you, for how important is it? It's very important because there's special places all throughout this area that, that we acknowledge and we, 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 we maintain our connection to country through song and dance and language of this area so it is very important to our people as we pass that on to the younger ones the younger generation of tomorrow so and the name itself you know like Kosciuszko do you as an Aboriginal and your people do you recognize this name as, as such 
Yes, well, <laughs> um, in today's society, we don't have a choice really, but we also, as we also acknowledge country as a part of. Um, we, we also have traditional names for for, yeah. for area as well. Yes. So like for Mount Kosciuszko, do you have any name at this moment? For this area, we Monero and Nagarigo people, we, that, that doesn't depict one area, it depicts a, an outline of a boundary where we, we stem from and that comes, that's a part of our ancestry on, on our father's side where that goes right back before colonisation to this country. So, yes. This year saw even more attractions. On the second day of the festival, the photographic gallery in Mud and Blizzard, Winter Expedition, along with the Streslecki track, was presented by Oscar Cantor. The movie Mount Kosciuszko, Frozen Years, by the same author, was also shown. The movie is a creative mixture of times past and present and retraces Streslecki's steps when in March 1840, accompanied by James MacArthur, James Riley and two Aboriginal guides, he reached and named Mount Kosciuszko. Strez Lecky's part was played by Polish newcomer Jack Hubler, James MacArthur's part by Slavik Koptinski, and James Riley's part by Lukas Karpinski. On the third day of our expedition, early Sunday morning, we set out for Byatt's camp, where the forest ends and the land is slightly easier to cross. However, the route from Moira's flat to Byatt's camp proved to be very hard. Lots of overgrown trees, waist-high snow, temperatures below zero. All this delayed our journey even more. It was too early to use snowshoes, so we often sank deep into the snow, carrying 40 kilo backpacks. Towards the evening, we reached Byatt's camp, where we made a huge hole in the snow and put our tents in. This was a great place to camp. The snow layer surrounding us was up to two metres high. We had a campfire with a sing-along. It was the most pleasant night we spent in the mountains. Contrary to the appearance, the freezing night proved to be rather warm, with the temperature of minus seven outside. The temperature in our sleeping bags was around four degrees. On the fourth day, we planned to reach Mount Kosciuszko about noon. However, in order to follow Streslecki's track precisely, we chose a path through Abbott's Peak and Mount Townsend, which was a detour. And so, we had three more kilometres to cross. Nevertheless, climbing Mount Townsend was worth it, as we saw the same view that Streslecki enjoyed when he climbed Mount Kosciuszko 170 years ago. Kosciuszko by Brendan Collins was also performed by the wonderful and powerful Barker College Symphony Orchestra at the beginning of the main festival's gala.